So now we're into 2.6, multiplying and dividing rational expressions. And it starts off with something pretty basic here. So we have um, these two terms that we want to multiply. And if you remember when you multiply fractions, you multiply the tops together, you multiply the bottoms together. It's as easy as that. Multiplying the tops together, multiplying the bottoms together. Now there are different ways to do this. You could multiply this times this and then simplify it. Or you can look to see how many x's and y's you have. And you can just work with the, the coefficients separately as well. And that would be my preferred method. I would basically just go across here and say, okay, how many x's would I have on the top if I expanded this? So I have two here and one here that would make three on the top and x times x, so that would be x squared. So I would have three on the top and two on the bottom. So if I have x cubed divided by x squared, that leaves me with one x on the top. So that cleaned up all my x's. So again, I had two and one is three and I had one and one is two. Three divided by two or cubed divided by squared give me a single x. Now I can do the same thing with the y's. I have three in the top here, and I would have five in the bottom if I expanded this. So three in the top, five in the bottom, that would leave me with two on the bottom. So now I've cleaned up all the variables here, that simply. And all I have to do is do this. So I have six times 15, and so I can, I can simplify this as well by dividing numerator and denominator here because I have 6 and 8, so I can divide each of these by 2. So that gives me 3 over 4. And this 5 would go into the 15 three times. So that gives me 3 times 3 is 9 over 4. So that's probably the easiest way to do it. Just figure out how many variables you have or how many x's and figure out the top and the bottom and then do the numbers very simply. Now again you have to state what the restrictions are and these because we're multiplying so I have x and y's in the denominator so that would be x is not equal to zero and y is not equal to zero. And the reason being, of course, that if you have a zero in the denominator and multiply it by anything, that would make your denominator zero, which of course is inadmissible in math. Okay, so let's go on to one that involves some factoring. And again, I can't overstress how your factoring skills need to be really sharp. You can go back on my, my lesson page and I did all the different types of factoring for you to practice. So here I have x squared minus 4 in the bottom over x plus 6 squared. And I look at this first of all and I notice that that is a difference of squares. This is a trinomial, a simple trinomial. And these ones are already factored. This is obviously a common factor has been taken out before you even had to start. So let's simplify this here. x squared minus 4, that's the same as x plus 2 times x minus 2. And in the denominator, I have x plus 6. I'm going to write this out twice this time, just because it might make it a little easier to see what's happening here. And on this side, I'm looking for a product of the first and the last. So I need a product of 18 and a sum of 9. So two numbers that multiply to give me 18, the same two numbers add to give me 9. And you should think right away, 6 and 3. 6 and 3. And because it's a simple trinomial, that means I just need an x in the first position, and I just plug in my numbers. You can always double check, remember? Okay, so 2 times 2 minus x. So now you can see that you have... 1x plus 6 here. And remember when you're doing multiplication, once everything's in factored form, like you can't cross out anything in here until it's times times. Okay, make sure everything's multiplication. So I have an x plus 6 here and an x plus 6 here. And now I have to deal with this 2 minus x, which is kind of like an x minus 2. 
but we went through this a little earlier and I would substitute in a value to see if they are just different by a factor of minus one. So if you put in a three here, you would have three minus two is one and two minus three is minus one. So that means that this would divide into this one minus one times. And now I'm going to write out my final answer here. I have x plus 2 times x plus 3, just what's ever left over here, the minus this and this one, all over 2 times x plus 6. Now you also have to state the restrictions here and if you go back to where you have first factored, which would be here, it was already factored, I can see that this cannot be a negative 6 because negative 6 plus 6 is 0. This can't be a 2 because 2 minus 2 is 0. So x is not equal to negative 6 or positive 2. Okay, so that's pretty much what you're going to be doing with the multiplications. Um, you need to know your factoring rules. If you don't, like I said, go back and look at those um, exercises I did for you on factoring difference of squares, all the different types. The last one I want to do for you is a division question. And it's pretty much the same thing as multiplication, but I think you will recall, and I'll do something over here. If I had um, three quarters divided by one half, you would say to me, oh yeah, I remember when you work with fractions, you have to invert and multiply or flip and multiply. Some of you might have heard in your lessons. So you flip this one, this one over. Now, the only thing that is different in division is that when you flip this, the denominator became the numerator and <clears throat> the numerator became the denominator. So that means you need restrictions for both places. So I need restrictions. Now I would need restriction for the, well, not on this question because it's just a fraction, but you would look for restrictions here here and here. Okay, so let's look at that when we do this longer question. Okay, so right away you want to check your sign. It's division, so it means I'm going to flip and multiply or invert and multiply. I also have some pretty serious factoring to do here. And the very first thing you should always look for when you're factoring is, and I hope you're saying out loud, a common factor. So in this trinomial here, it obviously has a common factor of 2. So I'm going to take out a 2 first of all. Always look for your common factors. It makes your, your factoring easier. And in the do denominator, I don't have any common factors here. Um, I might want to just go right ahead and factor this one now. So I'm looking for a product of 10 and a sum of minus 7. I'm going to do that way over here. Product 10. Remember, you should always do that off to the side. You don't want it in the middle here. It just makes a big mess of your, your nice math. Okay, so you probably got this one figured out. 5 times 2, 5 plus 2. And so this is going to give me a plus 5. And I need a B this time. So A plus 5B and an A plus 2B. Or not 2B. There you go. So this one's already finished. And I'm going to go to the other side and I'm going to change the sign to a multiplication sign. And I'm going to flip this. So, oh, this was the very same as this one. We didn't need to do all that factoring. Well, it's okay. It's good practice. Very same same um, same number is here, so I'm going to just write out what I've already factored on the other side. It's okay. Um, the good thing about factoring it is that you need to know what the restrictions are. So if you just flipped it and divided them out, you might have forgotten to do the restriction properly. In the numerator, I have 4a squared minus 12ab. So we have a common factor of 4a to remove. That's going to leave me with an a minus 3b. Always double check, oh, 4 squared minus 12ab, good. Okay, so now let's go back to this one. We haven't factored this. 
So we're looking for a product of 9 and a sum of minus 6 and maybe even recognize that that's a perfect square trinomial. So we have 3 minus 3 and minus 3. Minus 3 times minus 3 is 9. Minus 3 plus minus 3 is minus 6. So I have, I have um, a minus 3 squared. Right? So this is going to be 2 times a minus 3 squared. And oh, what did we forget? We forgot the b. And that's kind of made me think when I did that because usually there's something else to divide out. So we had a squared and b. If I had tried to expand this, of course, I wouldn't have had any b's in there and that would have been, that would have been really bad. Okay, so 5b, a plus 2b, we've got it all written out now. We have an a plus 5b, we have an a plus 2b, and right now let's do the restrictions before we cross things out and maybe make it sloppy and we can't see. So for our restrictions now, remember you have to look for where you first factored. So this restrictions, I'm gonna get a red pen. We're gonna have restrictions here, here, and here. Remember both numerator and denominator when you're doing division because your numerator became your denominator and your denominator became your numerator. Now, in this case, you would have been still okay because you would have used the restrictions here. And even if you didn't do this one, you would have done it because it's the same thing. But often that's not the way it goes. So my restrictions, I need to know all the restrictions here. So starting with this one here, a plus 5b. So again, if you can't remember how to work this, all you have to do is set it each of the brackets equal to zero and find out what a cannot be equal to. So if I bring this to the other side, I change the sign. So a is not equal to 5b. That's one of my restrictions. This one would be a is not equal to, you should see it right away, is 2b. a is not equal to minus 2b. So there's one of them. There's your second one. Now those are going to be the same restrictions for the numerator here, so you don't have to do that calculation. But this one would say, A, this is one that students miss often. What could you put in here to make this entire thing zero? And that's just A is not equal to zero. And we have one more here. So if I put A minus 3B equals zero, A is equal to 3B. So a cannot be equal to 3b. So you have these four, four restrictions on your variables. Okay. So let's go back and finish this calculation here. We need to finish simplifying it. And I've got a little bracket. So all of this goes off with all of this. They're the very same. Um, I have an a minus 3b here and I have two of them here. So this is going to get rid of one of those. So now I just have a minus 3b. And finally, this 2 can divide into the 4. So 2 goes into 4 two times. So I'm left with a minus 3b in the numerator. And in the denominator, I have 2a. Okay, so most importantly, just make sure that when you're doing this work that you... Um, you very carefully watch where the restrictions are going to be because you want you don't want to end up having um, like forgetting one of the restrictions because you didn't uh, you didn't look to what was going on in the numerator as well. Okay, so that's dividing, multiplying, and dividing rational expressions. Um, if if this has helped you, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so that I'll know that. Um, I'm not wasting my time doing all this math for you guys. Okay? Have a great day. Bye for now.